those of you guys who got in Wednesday and took monthlies, you guys made between 100 and 300 percent. You guys are absolutely degenerates. How to speculate invest. The way I do it is I get, I like to do what's called the breadcrumb, right? I like to look for little pieces of news hidden or little things that are, that are, 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 are happening in the world that, that are usually overshadowed by the, by larger uh, scale news and put like a little, a little breadcrumb, right? Like keep it on the back of my mind or keep it somewhere in my little folder, my little notes. And then I hear another article about something similar or something similar. And I, I look at the breadcrumbs. And then when I get enough breadcrumbs, I say, okay, let me look at historically what has happened and what could be. And then those breadcrumbs turn into a path. And, you know, uh, the, the breadcrumbs lead me to the path. Now I'm on the path. The question is, is when you get to the fork in the road, that's the problem, right? So, so you, it's just about getting yourself to the path and then you have to make a decision, right? It's going to go one way or the other. So for me, if you want to break down, look at what we've done just over the past, um, over the past three weeks, right? Three weeks or four weeks. The first one we looked at was Home Depot, right? Why did, why was, why was Home Depot on the radar? Well, we had had a big, big market pullback. You know, this was, uh, this was, you know, a month ago. And what ended up happening was we saw Home Depot, which generally has seasonality through the summer. Okay, it's already ran last year with COVID, but generally speaking, seasonality goes through during the summer and fall because of hurricane season, right? And so the idea is, is you want to be in before everyone else does when they try to jump in the mid. You want to be the early to catch the mid people and sell to them. You don't want to be the mid person trying to sell to the people buying the top because you never know if you're going to time it right. So what ended up happening was, is we had the perfect quote unquote storm. We had had a sell off on the stock a few days prior. Hurricane season is in full swing or starting up. And that Friday, the first tropical storm to make landfall was happening. It's a perfect storm. It was the perfect combination for, I'm going to get in. Some of you guys got in and the next week, it ran and you guys made a shitload of money, right? But Home Depot is a seasonality. So for those of you guys who got in that Friday, you got a discount and it most likely, barring a sector or market correction, it's going to keep rising through through the through the summer because you've got hurricane season. If we get a above average hurricane season like they're predicting, people want to be in before that because when they start coming, people run to Home Depot to get boards and two by fours and lumber prices are already crazy and they'll be lucky to buy them at all. And Home Depot, if they want to be shady, they can raise the prices even more. But then you've got scalping. So there's some problems there, but they've already they're already got it there. And the big concern has been now that lumber prices have dipped and these companies have bought all the lumber from the mills at a, a at a premium, are they going to actually lose money on this? So that's the concern. But if there's a stronger hurricane season, people are going to have to go out and buy it and they'll make up that potential revenue and investors will like that, okay? So that's why we got into Home Depot. The next one was um, generators and HVAC, okay? So how what, what was it that led us to get into generators and HVAC ahead of time? It was the heat wave and the wildfire, right? So we saw a massive heat wave in the Pacific Northwest which generally is a temperate climate, right? In the 70s is what the is what the highs, the upper 70s, sometimes low 80s is the is the is the is the general you know, high in the summer. So most people don't even have ACs. If they do, they haven't turned them on in forever. They turn them on once a year, or they don't, they don't, they haven't repaired them, or they just don't own them. So we saw this massive heat wave come in and it was, it was, it was, it was record temperatures for a while. So we knew that that would be a short-term spike. But then meteorologists were saying, it's not going to stop. There's going to be another wave and another wave, and another wave, meaning that people are going to have to either go out and buy ACs, fix the ACs they have, you know, do, do maintenance and repair, or more importantly, businesses that are open that have lots of people are going to have to either purchase or, 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 or re-up or recontract these large scale um, air conditioning uh, units, right? And we're not talking about like a, so a heat wave in, 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 you know, Idaho, where there's like 80,000 people, we're talking about millions and millions of people and businesses, right? That's huge money. So that was the reason that a lot of people got into car, which fun fact has just been doing this the whole time. Easy money. Some of you guys are in car already making absolute easy money. Now, what is the reason behind generators? Get ready. This was GNAC and a lot of you, or GRAC or GNAC, GRAC. Um, a lot of you guys made good money on this. Why generators? What, is it, what does any of this have to do with generators? 
Once again, it's speculative. This is how you get ahead of speculation as a, as a speculative trader or even commodity traders do this. It doesn't mean it's going to play out, but it gives you a chance to get in before everybody. All of these air conditioners, whether they're in people's homes, in businesses, in offices, in, 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 in anything, take up a lot of what? Power. Now, what happens when a power grid that is generally set at a certain level and, and capacity gets a massive, massive inundation of new power, can overload the system. And either it goes out or what we ended up seeing was mandatory blackouts. Cities telling residents they have to cut back on the power and do that. Well, guess what? If you can't use them off the grid, if the grid goes down or you get pushed off the grid, but it's hot as fuck, you need generators. And then on top of that, the other reason was the wildfires. At the same time, Oregon has these massive wildfires. And when these wildfires keep spreading, just like we saw in 2017, either A, a power company can be blamed for it, or B, a power company can go can get shut down or your power can get shut down as it, as, as it ravages through, through, through power stations or power lines or whatever like that, meaning more generator sales. And so a lot of us saw that coming in, in the first heat wave and invested in GNRC and GNRC Okay, car and other HVACs are still going up because it's already going into seasonality with these sales in mind. So that's another one. The last one was coffee. Okay, we started following, if you guys remember, we started following um, uh, in the morning call two weeks ago, we started talking about the uh, Brazil and the drought. And what was it that we were focusing on? We were focusing it on the beans from, from Brazil because 60% of the world's Arabic beans come from Brazil. And if they are having a drought and these crops are failing, that means that supply and demand is going to, unfortunately, if no one else can fill that void and fill that gap, is unfortunately going to cause the price of that commodity to rise. Now, a lot of people will be like, but Stocky, you know, we're seeing a larger than average crops of, of, of coffees in, in the Southeast Asia. Sure. And normally that would be fine. But right now we have a supply chain disruption. There is a backlog. And that's a lot farther to get from Southeast Asia to California than it is from Brazil to Miami. On top of that, you got to get in line with everybody else who's already got shipping containers or you got to do with this is why it's so so fucking five head to invest in, in in shipping right now. These shipping companies can charge whatever the fuck they want. You want stuff sent over? Oh, that's good. Oh wait, this other company's offering me five times as much to get theirs. Sorry, you're gonna have to wait. And so if these coffee companies or these coffee bean suppliers want to get their coffee in time, they're gonna get charged a lot extra, and they're either gonna have to eat that cost or pass that cost on to the customer. Either way, the price of coffee is gonna go up. And sure as shit, starting the next day, I know Scott got into it, but starting the next day, Joe, which is one of them, moved 25% in a week. Coffee. And now, the new one that I got into, and that some of you guys also got into, is, is, is masks, right? APT, which is one of them. You've got uh, 3M, you've got Lake, which makes P, uh, P, PPE. Okay, and I went with APT, which is mask. Why did I go with APT? Because I looked at the past. In 2020, APT went from $3 to $40, back to $24 and down. Why? Initial COVID spike, everyone got told to wear masks. Well, guess what? This small company, unlike 3M, which makes all kinds of shit, like equipment and machines and reading stuff, and Lake, which does all kinds of PPE, these guys specialize in N95 masks. And everyone went and rushed out and bought N95 masks, and the stock went parabolic. And then came down because everybody thought it was over and that they said we were going to be done with done with COVID by the summer. Then it turned out we weren't. And so mask mandates happened and the stock went up to $24. And over the past six months, it's been falling because vaccination rates have gone up and travel has opened up and everything like that. But last week, remember, we started talking about it in the morning. Los Angeles. First, it was EU started with Matt bringing back mask mandates. Then we saw Los Angeles. County, massive county mandates. So we started following these breadcrumbs. And then what happened? That was on Thursday, Wednesday. Thursday, I got into APT leaps. Friday, San Francisco and New York City 
are in talks of bringing back mask mandates. Look at the news today. Even some red states are considering bringing mask mandates. And the mask mandates aren't for because everybody is going to get COVID and die. It's because the problem is, is that we have an issue where you don't know if somebody's vaccinated or not, right? So if nobody, if they're not wearing a mask, you're assuming that they're vaccinated, but they might be unvaccinated, which is fine to vaccinate people, but it could spread and mutate and stuff like that. So regardless of the politics, I'm just trying to get ahead of the trend. And what did we see? Wednesday, we got into it. And by Friday, it moved uh, from nine, uh, $9 up to $10. It had moved, well, actually it moved from eight eight seventy to $10. It moved, what, 12% in a day and a half? And if I look at APT after hours from yesterday, um, it came back down. It, it peaked at 1025, came down right before close to 979, and now it's back to $10 again. So that means just since Wednesday when we started focusing on this, it's moved from $8.50 to $10. That's almost 15%. Now, my leaps, because I, I wasn't degen, I have leaps at $10 calls for next year. They're already up 25%. Those of you guys who got in Wednesday and took monthlies, you guys made between 100 and 300%. You guys are absolutely degenerates. But um, my only problem is, is that I took a... It's not a problem. It's a good problem to have. I took a smaller position than I had wanted to, but I've been trying to be more careful with uh, with uh, with positioning because the market's so volatile. So when I used to take something that would be like you know three or four thousand dollar leaps, I'm taking like twelve to fifteen hundred dollar now because the market's so volatile. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to get fucking wrecked. And I've been been profit taking a lot earlier than I usually do. Um, but but so that's what I've got. So for those of you guys who are are looking, let me let me show you my position here. Yeah, I know I'm tired, guys. It's it's I have a baby. Okay. Um, just to show you guys my position right now so you can understand. And now remember, you're not always going to be right about uh, about uh, getting in ahead of things and speculatively trading, okay? But the idea is to get in before everyone else. And the cool thing is, is that if you get in and nobody else gets in with you, you can just cut your loss and move on, right? You're only fucked if it goes against you. And that, and generally, that, 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 that won't happen as much. And if you're a, a shares player, you're better off because you can change it. All right, let me show you guys my APT position. Um, small position, but I'll show it to you anyways. Let me get a screenshot here. So this is the one that I took on Wednesday. So I got 10 APT January 21st, 2022 calls. Uh, I bought them at 153. There's a pretty wide spread in them because there was a lot of interest and people trying to undercut the price. Um, but that'll tighten up as we get closer to uh, to the day. Mid mid range price was at 190. Uh, I only have 10 at an average of 1530, but uh, I'm already up 20%. So um, they're at 1905, and this has only been three days. Now, obviously, it was much different if you were in, you know, let's say a short dated option, like a degenerate. Uh, for example, if you were in, um, you know, uh, a, a July 30th $10 call, they were uh, $37 on Wednesday, and they closed it. Uh, they got as high as $100 yesterday, so it was 200%. But obviously, something like that, you don't want to uh, you don't want to mess with because remember, you're you're looking for um, a trend, and if you put too much money in and you don't catch the bottom before the bounce up, you could get wrecked. It's like with Hut, right? Like look at Hut. I got into Hut um, when it was right around five dollars, and I got seven dollar and fifty cent next year calls. Because I was expecting uh, Bitcoin to kind of flatten out around 30 and move back up to like 36, 37. But I timed it incorrectly. And it actually got all the way down to $3.45. But, but, remember I told you I'm planning on holding this for a year. So even though I didn't time the exact bottom, just so you guys are aware, this moved up an additional 7% after hours. It's sitting at 436 right now. So it's sitting right here. So... Even though I did not time it correctly, and that's why for a lot of you guys, you want to look for very, very long distance. Uh, my newest YouTube video, if you go look at it and like it, drop today, it's about covered calls and leaps. And this is why leaps are important. Yeah, it's not going to make you as much money uh, in, in a short per, uh, spurt of time. But you're also not going to get wrecked nearly as much. This thing has moved 30% in the last three days. Still down, still down. But it's moved 30% up. So I was looking at this for a year. I didn't time the bottom, granted. 
but I'm speculatively looking at this. Now, this is a whole different type of speculation. I'm doing this off of a guess of Bitcoin. There's no like news coming out like these other ones that we just broke down with uh, how we broke down with Home Depot and hurricane season with uh, um, HVAC and generators with uh, the heat wave, the power grid uh, failure and uh, wildfires um, with uh, coffee with the news in Brazil. And we, we, we got re, re front ran that and APT, which we're front running right now, potentially with the mask mandates, which I was looking up over here. Uh, you know, they're 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 looking um, they're looking all across the, the country right now um, for uh, for for that. Um, the only one is Florida, of course. Even West Virginia's talking about it. It's just the rumors. So that that's where the money's coming from. So will I make that a YouTube video? What the the whiteboard? No, nobody wants to hear my boring shit about how to be a speculative investor. Mm -hmm.